Now, after calculating these four permissible stresses, we have to find out the force P, which is given, which is not given in the numerical statement. Okay, so here the D, that is diameter of rod, is given, but the force P is not given. So let us calculate force P acting on the rods of quarter joint. Now, to find out the force P acting on the rods of quarter joint, we have to refer the equation from the step number one. Actually, from the step number one. we used to calculate the diameter of rod that is small d but here in this problem the diameter of rod small d is given it is 50 mm but the force p is not given okay so let us use this equation to find out force p acting on the rods of quarter joint now i have written the equation to find out force p from step number 1 now let us put the value of here so small d is given 50 mm so let us put the value of small d 50 mm under root 4 into p P is as it is that we have to determine into upon pi into sigma t. So permissible tensile stress just we have calculated it is 63.33. Okay. So from this equation, let us calculate force P acting on the rods of quarter joint. So after calculation, you will get the answer of force P as 1.24 into 10 raised to 5 newton, and this is the force P acting on the rods of quarter joint. now after calculating force p let us move to the next part of this solution now in the solution we have to determine four parameters d1 d2 d4 and c okay so this four parameter we have to determine so out of that first of all we will focus on d1 and d2 so if you uh, refer the design procedure of quarter joint this is the step number 3 from this step number 3 we used to calculate the diameter of spigot okay so we know that from the cut section the diameter of spigot is d2 and the inside diameter of socket is a, is also d2 okay so inside diameter of socket and the diameter of spigot is denoted by same notation that is d2 so from this equation we can get the value of d2 which is nothing but the diameter of spigot or inner diameter of socket and this is the step number 4 from this uh, step number 4 we can calculate d1 that is outer diameter of socket so it is obvious that out of d1 and d2 first of all we have to calculate d2 by using the equation given in the step number 3 and then we have to calculate d1 from the equation given in the step number 4 so let us use this equation from step number 3 first and then calculate d2 now here i have written the equation from step number 3 to calculate d2 now let us put the value of permissible tensile stress first it is 63.33 newton per mm square force p we have just calculated in the step num point number 2 it is 1.24 into 10 to the power 5 newton and t is given it is 15 mm so by putting the value of sigma t p and t we can calculate d2 so after putting the value of sigma t p and t we can simplify this equation like this we can take this denominator to the left left hand side and this 63.33 to the denominator if you take uh, if you solve this its answer is 1957.99 which is on rss which is having positive sign if you take this uh, on the uh, into the lhs it will have the negative sign and we will get in this way one quadratic equation now we have to solve this quadratic equation to get the value of d2 now to solve this quadratic equation we have to use calculator so first of all press this mode button three times you will get this option equation so you in order to use this equation we have to press button number 1 you will see this option now i once again press the mode button you you can see this option degree 2 or 3 so this is the equation having degree 2 so press 2 now we have to enter the value of a b and c so let i will tell you this a is nothing but the coefficient of d2 square b is nothing but the coefficient of this d2 and c is nothing but the constant okay so value of a is pi by 4 so let us enter the value of this a as a pi by 4 then the value of b is minus 15 coefficient of d2 and c is a constant its value is minus 1957.99 so if you press this equal to button you will get the answer of this d2 and its answer is 60.38 now the answer of d2 is 60.38 let us round up it up to 62 mm now the next point is point number 4 calculate d1 after calculating this d2 we can calculate the d1 
Now the next point in this solution is calculate D1 which is the second parameter that we have to determine. For that purpose refer the step number 4 equation given in this step number 4 and this equation is sigma t is equal to p upon pi by 4 into bracket d1 square minus d2 square minus d1 minus d2 into t. Now here d1 is unknown for us p sigma t and d2 and t are known. d2 just we have calculated t is given sigma t is we have calculated and p also we have calculated. So let us write this equation here and let us put the known values. Now here in this equation I have used the value of sigma t permissible tensile stress it is 63.33 value of p as 1.24 into 10 raised to 5 value of d2 62 just we have calculated and value of uh, t as a 15 mm okay so just I have simplified this equation like this way so first of all I have uh, simplified this uh, denominator like this then I have further simplified this uh, to get uh, this equation like this okay then I have take this denominator on the LHS this 63.33 on the RHS and likewise I have explained for this uh, step number 3 I have taken this RHS to the LHS and the final equation quadratic equation is pi by 4 d1 square minus 15 d1 minus 4047.06 4, 4, 4, is equal to 0 so by, by solving this quadratic equation we can get the value of d1 so let us solve this quadratic equation so coefficient of d1 square is a so let us put the value of a as pi by 4 coefficient of d1 is b here so b is minus 15 and this is the constant that is 4047.06 it is minus 4047.06 so by solving this we can get the answer of d1 as 81.96 so after solving this quadratic equation we have got the answer of d1 as 81.96 I have rounded it off up to 83 mm so final answer of d1 is 83 mm that is the outer diameter of socket is 83 mm this is the second answer for this numerical now in the next part of solution we have to determine the d4 and c to find out the d4 we have to use the equation first equation from step number 7 so in regular problems where we have to solve all the seven steps this equation is used to check the crushing stress in the socket but here as this is not the problem where we have to solve all the steps so this is the problem where we just have to determine the limited or few points or few dimensional parameters just like a d4 so to find out d4 we have to use the equation 1 from step number 7 and to find out c we have to use the second equation from step number 7 okay so first of all let us use this first equation and let us find out this d4 so I have used this is the first equation from step number 7 so that we can calculate d4 so let us put the value of permissible compressive stress it is 126.66 value of p is 1.24 into 10 raised to 5 d4 is unknown d2 we have calculated from the point number 3 it is 62 into this t is given in the problem statement it is 15 so let us solve this for getting the value of a d4 if you solve this you will get the answer of d4 as 127.26 mm let us round off this value to 129 mm so this is the answer of d4 that is the diameter of socket collar now the last part of this problem solution is to find out the C that is distance between slot to the end of socket collar and for that purpose we have to use the second equation from the step number 7 okay so as I discussed earlier actually this equation is used to check the shear stress for the socket but here as this is not a problem to solve all the seven steps here we have to find out only limited dimensions of socket so we, we will use this equation to find out C so let us use this equation to find out C for the socket now here I have written this uh, equation by referring the step number 7 second equation now let us put the value of uh, tau here permissible shear stress tau it is 31.66 p is 1.24 into 10 raised to 5 then c we have to determine d4 just we have calculated it is 129 minus d2 we have calculated already it is 62 so if you calculate this value of c you will get the answer as 29.2 22 mm so let us round off this value to to 31 mm 
and this is the final answer for this numerical okay so this problem is important because here in this problem you don't have to use all these seven steps so you have to use the equation from this uh, design procedure of quarter joint okay to find out the parameters that are asked in this numerical so in this numerical we were asked to find out the dimensions of socket that is d1 d2 d3 and d1 d2 d4 and c so these four parameters we have determined and uh, one more point in this problem the diameter of rod was given p was not given so we have uh, in the initial phase of problem first of all we have calculated the p and then we have uh, moved for forward to find out this d1 uh, d2 d4 and c